It's a time for the Via Bugisi. Gonna do it one more time. Time for the Via Bugisi. Trust the Profits the formula here, and we're doing a stakes preview of the Via Borghese. Yes, the Via Borghese. Uh, not exactly a household name when it comes to stakes races, but it's a fun little stakes race this time of year. You don't get the huge million-dollar stakes races. We're getting closer to the Pegasus. We're not there yet. We're getting closer to some of those prep races for the Kentucky Derby, but not just quite there yet. So let's take a look at something like the Via Borghese coming to you December 17th at Gulfstream. Uh, what I like about this one, yeah, it's 100, uh, 100K, not jump change, but it's not like a huge stakes race. But 11 furlongs on turf. I love the distance. One mile and three eighths. One and three eighths miles, if you want to look at it that way, too. Uh, eight horses. Wish it was a deeper field, but it's going to be an interesting one. Let's start at the beginning here. Beside herself. This is a Pletcher Sayas joint. Uh, beside herself, eight races in 2022. Three of those are wins. All three wins are allowance races. It's going to be a little bit of a theme with some of these horses. As they do get wins, you're not going to see a whole lot of them winning major stakes races and, and jumping into the 100K via Brigisi here. Uh, last race out, eighth place finish. It was a G3 stakes race, but finished um, in that 12 furlong race, 13 lengths back at Keeneland. Previous to that, a fourth place finish, only three lengths back at the Jockey Club Oaks Invitational Stakes. Another long race, 11 furlongs at Belmont at Aqueduct, however you want to say that, the barbecue. I would say this horse is going to be your likely pace setter, seeing a lot of speed figures from this horse. We're seeing a lot of numbers um, in previous performances, rather, that indicate that this could be the pace setter, especially if she draws an inside pull here, uh, pull position. Champagne Ivy, that'll be your next horse up here. Seven races, one win in 2022. One graded stakes race, which was the Orchid, sixth place finish. This was back in April. Uh, last win was uh, in February at Gulfstream, so at, at the, the course that we're talking about here, going wire to wire, 12 furlongs, uh, two and a quarter lengths ahead of the second place horse on Tapita, um, and five races has, has raced five races since then without a win. Most recently, heavily favored going into a mile and 70 yard race, 35K claimer, finishing second by one and a quarter lengths. Uh, O'Dwyer uh, claimed on the horse previous to that. Uh, to note here, horse's best races that we've seen, and these were some races that happened uh, last year. Seems like going off turf, going on Tapita at Gulf Stream has been favorable for this horse. Seen some distance races as well, finishing first and second. So if this does end up going off turf, uh, Champagne Ivy, an interesting play here. May even be with eight horses, an interesting play, uh, as you'll see here as we get towards the conclusion. Let's move on. Treasure of War, five races, two wins in 2022. Last race, finished second, eight and a half furlongs. Not exactly this type of distance. Uh, in an off-turf race at Indianapolis. Also, not exactly the level of Gulfstream. Was outmatched in the Woodford Reserve, Virginia Oaks at Colonial. Nine furlongs, 200K race, finishing 14th place. Uh, that was its only stakes race for uh, Treasure of War. Won a 61K nine furlong race at Ellis Park by a head previous to that. Have yet to see this horse race at the distance we're talking about here. Once you get up above that nine furlong mark, uh, those extra two furlongs could make a difference here for Treasure of War. I uh, haven't seen exactly the type of performance yet, but still a very young horse with Treasure of War. Flying Fortress, four races, two wins in 2022. Most recently, a fifth place finish in its only stakes race. That same Dowager race that we talked about previously. It's well for a long G3 race. Um, finishing nine lengths behind the winner and three lengths ahead of the horse we mentioned previous to that beside herself. Previous to that, uh, a nine furlong 80K allowance race, wire to wire winner, and then second place before that, eight and a half furlongs, uh, 80K allowance race with 11 horse field at Colonial. Kind of an interesting horse here, Flying Fortress. Starship Malamar. Malamar. Uh, nine races in 2022, only one win. Ran an allowance and claiming races 
in 2022. No stakes races to name. This would be the first one. Last four races finished in the money. Pretty impressive. Including an eight and a half furlong 60K long shot win at Monmouth. Uh, one and a quarter lengths ahead of the rest. I think in that race, uh, she was the least favorite horse, 13 to one odds. Last race at Aqueduct finished third uh, by three lengths in a nine furlong six horse race. Not a huge field, but still not too bad of a finish. Spotty record at Gulfstream, though, over two and a half years, uh, won three times in 22 attempts. So just keep that in mind. We are at Gulfstream Starship Malamar. Lachine. Uh, yeah, we're getting into some interesting photos here, or lack thereof in some cases. Five races, one win, one second place in 2022. Last race, came in second by six, length, uh, six lengths behind at Laurel Park in a nine furlong 57k allowance race. Okay. Uh, ran two 11 furlong races at Aqueduct previous to that, coming in fourth place in both races, two and three quarter lengths behind in both races as well. Good showings, in my opinion. Yeah, fourth place doesn't sound great, two lengths behind, but, you know, we're, we're also talking about not such a deep field here at Gulfstream. So I think looking at those two races could be an interesting indicator of what Lachine might be able to do. Lone win was in July, going a mile, so not exactly the distance we're talking about here, in a 50K allowance race, winning by three and a quarter, uh, coming off of a 10-month layoff. Won at this distance a year ago in Saratoga. It's actually looking better last year than this year. Uh, interesting horse. Also curious to see if we can get her back to her 2021 uh, record here. And moving on, Viburnum. In terms of in the money finishing in 2022, this is the horse that you want to focus on, Viburnum. Uh, Irad Ortiz going to be in the mount. Always a consideration there. Last race finished fifth at the AGS Ladies Marathon, a G3 race, going one and five sixteenths miles at Kentucky Downs. Eight lengths behind, but it's Kentucky Downs. Previous to that, tied together two wins, one at Kentucky Downs 12 days earlier, uh, 62K, and was a a winner by a head again, one in five sixteenths mile. Try to do the math on that. And one at Delaware, 42K, eight and a half furlong, and three and a, three quarters of a length ahead. Uh, as I said before, most impressive in the money finishing of this group has raced in some stakes races. But Burnham, I think, is probably one of your top choices here. And getting to our last horse, if we don't have a picture of. Good American, ironically, with a name like Good American, is an English horse. All races have been raced in England. Uh, four races this year, one second place finish. Most recently, that second place finished a half a length back and a 13K handicap. Um, has been racing at this distance. Um, so that's a consideration. But previous to that, 12th place finish, 12 lengths back and 56K race. Fifth place finish, nine lengths back in a 119K race. So just in terms of matching purses here and trying to equate that to strength of field, good American, interesting horse here just because you're shipping, but not exactly under my consideration as of yet. Tyler Gaffleone in the mount, interesting. Um, but right now I'm going to cross him off. The rest, we've gone through all eight horses. So the strategy here, I'm putting Lachine to win. I think this is an interesting play here. I think Viburnum is probably going to go off as the morning is going to go off as the morning line favorite and the post time favorite. Um, I would say key Viburnum in any sort of box, adding in Lachine, Flying Fortress, and Champagne Ivy. I think Champagne Ivy is also an interesting play here. Um, very curious to see what the odds are. Also curious to hear what you think. Go ahead and comment below. Let me know if I'm way off here. Eight horses, a lot of different options. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button for us as well so you can get all our awesome videos and check out our memberships. Hit that join link. See what our memberships have to offer. We will offer um, two different tiers of our picks for the week. That's all I have. Hope you guys enjoy it. Once again, hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next time.